Yesterday, my son found a fledgling killdeer that appeared to be orphaned, and we didn't know what to do about it, so we researched it and decided we probably should leave it where it's at. And that's generally the best thing to do. If you ever find a wild animal, just leave it where it's at. Even if it appears orphaned, its mother may be nearby. Birds, a lot of times their parents can hear them chirping up to two blocks away. A lot of times fledgling birds that have, you know, newly developed feathers and all forage around the ground for anywhere from like two days to two weeks. So it's very common in the spring, you might find these, these baby birds or even other babies like bunnies and who knows what else you might find out there and it's just perfectly natural it's good to leave them there one of the things i found that was interesting in my research is that if you touch a bird it really isn't going to hurt the bird so if you feel like you need to relocate the bird to a safer location you could do that you know if it's in a dangerous place like in the road or something and you don't have to worry about your germs getting on there and its mother killing it or you know abandoning it because maybe it sensed that somehow that's actually a myth. Birds have a poor sense of smell, apparently, so whether or not you might have held it, they may not even realize. Another thing about it all is, is it's illegal to take in a wild animal. Um, there's a lot of federal laws and state laws that you need to take into consideration, and uh, if you want to be somebody that rescues animals, you can become a wildlife rehabilitator a licensed one. I'm gonna share some websites and resources online that discuss that further. But in the meantime, if you see an animal and it doesn't appear to be hurt, it's not bleeding, your cat didn't bring it to you or your dog, there's no reason to believe that it needs your help. Just leave that thing alone. You can observe it from a distance. If you come back in a couple of days and it's still there or it's, or it's calling out for a long period, you know, you, you might want to contact somebody. If it is injured, or if you do feel like it's abandoned, one of the parents is laying there dead, or you have some other reason to believe that it's been abandoned or orphaned, call a wildlife rehabilitator. I'll show you right now how you can find one. It's probably a good idea if you have children to review this kind of stuff with them so, you know, when they're out and about, they know ahead of time how to handle it. And anybody who is interested in animals and learning a little bit more, Definitely check out the Humane Society of the United States website. It's the humanesociety.org. And I'm on this page here under Animal Resources Tips and find a wildlife rehabilitator. So if you're looking for one, you can probably just kind of Google that, find a wildlife rehabilitator and end up invariably here. Um, there's another site that is good as well, the NWRA wildlife.org site. It's a pretty good site. But I think you have to pay to find members. I don't know. I, I didn't have any luck finding anybody. But definitely here, you can just pick your state like I did. And once you get to, like, my state, North Carolina, you, you click on it. And it brings you to the Wildlife Resources um, website for your area. Your state's website, you know, it may be different than this. I don't know. I'm pretty sure they all pretty much have all the information you would need for your particular state. In North Carolina, specifically, you could search all counties and find you know people in your area and they tell you it's illegal to keep any north carolina wildlife without a permit and north carolina law prohibits any native wildlife being kept as pets something that i didn't really know um, until i read this this is why we have licensed wildlife rehabilitators and these are volunteers that have the resources to provide care for small mammals birds reptiles and some other species until the animal can be released back into their natural habitat due to high risk for carrying rabies the following wild animals should not be handled and cannot be rehabilitated foxes skunks raccoons coyotes and bats please leave these animals alone if your pet has brought one of these animals to you, contact your local vet for advice. Wild turkeys and deer cannot be rehabilitated. For injured orphaned bears and federally or state listed endangered, threatened, or special concern species, please go you know, to this other reference here they have. We can check that out real quick. And it looks like, give you maybe a number to call right here. If you find a wild animal, the best thing you can do is leave it alone or put it back where it was found. If you are truly concerned that the animal is injured or orphaned, but not sure, please read the following information. If it's injured, if the animal is able to move on its own, then it is not injured. Best thing to do is just leave it alone. If it is still alive and just not moving, then it is still not necessarily injured. 
Certain species have a tendency to become very still when they think they are threatened or concerned. The best thing to do is leave it alone for at least 24 hours and allow it to move on its own. If it is obviously injured and is not one of the high risk for rabies listed above, then go to the bottom of this section to search for a wildlife rehabilitator in your county. Is the animal orphaned? Just because a young animal is alone and the adult cannot be seen doesn't mean the animal is orphaned. Many juvenile animals are left alone by the adult for long periods of time or merely have fallen out of their nest. Since it is always best to give the adults the opportunity to reestablish contact and take care of their own offspring, a good rule of thumb is to just leave it alone for 24 to 48 hours to determine if the parent will return. If a dead adult is found close by to the young animal and is not one of the high risk for rabies listed above, then go to the bottom of this section to search for the wildlife rehabilitator in your county. So really good information in here. They even talk up here about how animals may be aggressive if they're injured. Always be cautious. Relocate children and pets indoors if you find an animal that's potentially got rabies. Locate a licensed wildlife rehabilitator like they help you do down here. If you find an injured animal, licensed wildlife rehabilitators provide care for an animal to the point in which it can be released back into its natural environment. Humane Society also has good information like found an orphaned or injured baby wild animal, how to tell if baby animals are orphaned. So they kind of go into a little bit more detail and, you know, they break it down, you know, to different types of animals, you know, what to do, what to consider. And all these things are very likely to be found, you know, around where I'm at here in North Carolina. So if you live in North Carolina or, or anywhere like this where you're very likely to see animals, you may want to check out the Humane Society's website learn a little bit more about that. The NWRA, the National Wildlife Rehabilitation Association a website here, it has some good information too. Permits to possess wild animals for rehabilitation usually are required from the state agency that regulates and deals with the wild animal management. If you are rehabilitating a bird, a, a permit from the United States Fish and Wildlife Service is required under the Migratory Bird Treaty Act and other federal regulations. Most wild animals are protected by governmental regulations. Almost all birds and mammals, endangered and threatened species, and even reptiles, amphibians, fish, and insects usually are protected by laws prohibiting possession without permit. It is illegal to have any protected animal in your possession. Uh, most people know that. If you're considering on being somebody who might want to you know, be a rehabilitator. These are some good points here. Like it says, as you begin treating distressed wild animals and interacting with people that find them, remember you and your family come first. Be prepared to spend less time with your family or friends. Experience animal suffering and death and the danger associated with handling wild animals. Although your family may be involved or supportive, this stress can be overwhelming at times. And they talk about needing insurance and the commitment, time, and money. Rehabilitation can be expensive. Purchasing books, joining organizations, and attending training sessions cost money. Once into actual animal care, it is more expensive. Most rehabilitators pay for food, cages, medicines, transportation, and other things from their own pockets unless they can solicit donors. It also takes a lot of time to rehabilitate correctly. For example, baby birds must be fed every 15 to 30 minutes during daylight hours, 14 hours a day. Most individuals that remain wildlife rehabilitators over time form a nonprofit, and they kind of go into that a little bit. Uh, it's complex, but you should not be afraid of becoming involved. Volunteering is the best first step into wildlife rehabilitation. So my son's really into this sort of thing, but after I read him all this, he did not appear nearly as interested. But if that should... Uh, become something that he is more interested in doing we definitely will consider this volunteering opportunity here uh, wherever we may be able to find them so there's some good stuff here at the national wildlife rehabilitators association and even more so more accessibly so the humane society of the united states website so definitely give those things a check and educate yourself a little bit so you can better anticipate uh, what you might be dealing with if you encounter an animal and that way you don't make the mistake of taking an animal home that would otherwise have survived and now you've got to deal with that animal and potentially harm it or yourself. On Facebook you may find some groups local to you that rescue animals like this one I found in my hometown. I was surprised to find this and they've got quite a few likes. They are a nonprofit organization that take in orphaned and injured wildlife 
mammals only. I contacted them about the bird and they hooked me up. They knew some people that were knowledgeable about birds. So they were still helpful, even though they don't deal with birds. So you may want to go and like a page that's local to you just to show some support, maybe even donate if you like what they're doing, because I'm sure they can use the help. One more thing I almost failed to mention, and that is Vegan Linked, which would have been crazy because I've been working so hard on this for the last month. I mean, day in, day out, I've been building this website and volunteering my time places, doing videos for various restaurants and at the Humane League for some of their events, and Changing Hearts Farm, which brings me back to what we were talking about if you want to volunteer for animal rescue type place a refuge or sanctuary they got a lot of different names for them um, there's probably one near you an animal sanctuary this one is near me called changing hearts farm it's a new one that isn't open yet but it's about to be and we went there a few weeks ago it's a great way to get out and get some sunshine learn about animals so if you're interested in learning about or helping animals that need your help definitely go to one of these sanctuaries it's a great way to also just get some sunshine spend time with the family doing great things uh, this is a volunteer photo maybe one day you'll be in one like this these were all the volunteers that helped out that day that's my son my wife and, and me right there and Here's my son feeding one of the residents. We were there that day to help prepare the farm there for a new resident. And I've been back since to cover another resident coming uh, that was a horse last, last weekend, a new horse they got. So this is just a great way to learn from people that are already doing it, that need your help, and see what it's like to care for animals on a day-in, day-out basis. Uh, maybe it's not the kind of animals that you might see in the wild, but some of these places may have those types of animals as well. So if you go to veganlinked.com, hopefully sooner than later, you'll be able to find a compassionate vegan place, like a sanctuary near you, that you'll be able to volunteer at and learn and be a part of something special, helping great people and animals that need our help the most.